Hello and welcome to what is the first and perhaps only episode of Uncle David's Agony Column, a necessarily fast-paced affair as I'm always accused of making videos that are too long for the attention span of today's average TikTok wanker. Therefore, I've allowed only 6 minutes and 8 seconds for this unfortunately titled video piece, which immediately conjures up three noticeable problems. Number one, it's fast-paced because I have a lot to cram into 6 minutes and 8 seconds, and B, I've allowed only 6 minutes and 8 seconds because I have very little time between working and drinking to jigsaw this dreadful mess together, and three, it's unfortunately titled because Uncle David's agony column sounds like something my niece would refer to while pointing at the groin of her dolly in front of several concerned social workers and a female police officer. But if we can get past that horrific image, the point of this video and any such that may follow the format is to address a handful of the hopefuls who message me for electrical advice following several such instances recently managing to avoid my carefully crafted spam folder rules and plopping into my inbox to interrupt my drinking time. However, if we are going to do this, there are three rules which, should this extend to future episodes, can be laid down as Number one, there are no coffee shoutouts as the format is too short and nobody likes them anyway aside from Test Gear Junkie, Mr Humbug and about a hundred guys called Andy and B, I've taken the trouble to make a spiffing new animated end card especially for this which itself slurps up four seconds of runtime that I must remember to allow for and three, this doesn't mean you can all start firing in technical questions in the hope I'll read them out on the interwebs because I'll probably disappoint you and I'm no authority on answering technical questions anyway. Anyway, I think three is especially important here because I get a lot of messages across numerous different messaging platforms that I never get around to addressing, which, rather annoyingly, throws up yet more points along the lines of one, I don't even get around to answering messages from paying customers half the time, so why should I give you my attention for free, you fucking douchebag? And B, I'm rarely sober enough to edit together a fast-paced video such as this, which is probably proving a huge time sink, even though I have knocked up that whizzy new four-second animated end card, which I am keen to show off, although my talking too much at this juncture probably won't help the runtime, so I'll just quickly move on to three. Three, this whole listing is already proving really tedious and needs to stop. So for the remaining five people left watching, let's get to the point and paraphrase the email of yet another viewer called Andy, who asks, While swimming at my local gym, I observed the cleaner using a 240 volt pressure washer to clean the floor tiles adjacent to the pool. The pressure washer was connected to the mains by an extension reel which trailed along the side of the pool and out of a door, presumably to a socket in a changing room. The washer itself was about 0.8 metres from the poolside, and there were several people swimming at the time. I asked the cleaner what would happen if the washer fell into the pool. She said she didn't know, but it had never happened before and she was quite careful. Am I right to be concerned? Fortuitously enough, this is exactly the kind of question my massive column happens to be hard for, and as Andy ponders it while flossing his towel vigorously between his legs in the changing room, he's right to be concerned about more than just the cost of his expensive gym membership, and that everyone else is sniggering over the brown streak he smeared across the cotton. BS7671, that 624-page tome, which is the same colour as Andy's towel stain, and which isn't a cracking read as it contains no sex, murders, tits, or plot twists, nonetheless has a whole section on electricity around bathtubs and basins, including, but not limited to, swimming pools, and the general idea is to keep socket outlets the fuck away from them, which is why, when Andy's gym pool was designed and built, neither the architect, electrical designer, nor builder decided to book such sage advice and go rogue installing sockets willy-nilly so that swimmers could, rather handily, plug in phone chargers, televisions, or toasters, whilst all the time kindly refraining from running, bombing, ducking, and petting, among other 1970s poolside no-nos. Therefore, Mrs. Mop is kind of defeating the objective and thwarting the plans of not only the architect, designer, and builder, but also the egghead wankers behind BS7671, because, you know, simply plugging in an extension lead and dragging the socket right up to the edge of the swimming pool defeats the reason why none of the above fitted a fucking socket outlet for her Karcher pressure washer in the first fucking place. How am I for timing? I need those four seconds for the new animated end card. Shit, I'm going over. One would hope there are shock protection methods in place on the socket circuit that now finds itself reluctantly lurking suspiciously poolside like a paedophile, measures such as good low earth impedance and RCD additional protection, but then you're relying on three things. One, the basic insulation of both the extension lead and the appliance aren't worn, damaged or compromised by moisture whilst operating in an environment they perhaps weren't designed for, and B, said circuit shock protection is in place and will operate in a timely fashion, and three, when I say I'm not going to make any more of these fucking lists, it turns out I'm probably lying, which doesn't bode well for any future videos in this tiresome format. Where people like Andy are wet barefoot in a moisture-rich environment and packing a pair of rolled-up socks down the front of their speedos to impress the ladies, or the gays, the risk of a shock incident is dramatically raised. Incidentally, there's also a shock factor if the socks work their way around to the back of Andy's speedos, but that's not electrically related, even though it would be a quick way for everyone to vacate the pool before swallowing any more water. If Andy stands on any frayed insulation of that extension lead without a rubber Veruca sock, he might not die thanks to the circuit shock protection, but nobody can be 100% certain of what will happen until we can convince Andy to go ahead and try it. The bottom line is that it's the public being put at risk, and the great unwashed all turning up for their free bath aren't being appraised of said risk. 
If the gym bods were to say, sure, you can go swimming, but be warned, we will be swinging around mains electrical equipment in the vicinity and who knows if an accident will happen, then patrons like Andy can make their own informed risk assessment of whether they want to dive in at the deep end, have a sneaky piss at the shallow end, or swerve the swimming altogether and go pedal an exercise bike until the cleaner has packed up and pissed off. I assume, however, the gym bods are not informing their punters of the risk and are simply operating under the, well, nothing bad has ever happened previously argument, which is always fine until that annoying one time when it isn't, and our Andy, or some other unfortunate, rather inconveniently ends up floating upside down on the surface of the pool like a dead goldfish. At that point, fingers get pointed, and everyone blames everyone else for such an obvious failing of basic common sense and health and safety procedures. Meanwhile, our Andy's the one whose obituary reads he died doing the water aerobics class he loved, which probably isn't the legacy he planned to leave to the ages, and, frankly, makes him sound like an asshole. Andy, I would suggest the gym either use a cleaning machine made for the location, probably using an isolation transformer or a battery pack, or they attend to their cleaning when the pool isn't occupied by the generally ignorant general public. Although that doesn't make it safe for Mrs Mop, who is undertaking the cleaning, and who is herself being exposed to risk by her employer, probably without realising it. Nonetheless, I'm sure they will keep calm and carry on until something, or someone, goes belly up. There. Am I in time? Have we still got the four seconds for the new animated end card? No? Bollocks!